One more time. 
time, come on. I was wearing the blood.
Our Father, you inhabit the praise of your people. Forgive us and our saved lives that we have not worshipped you more. We have not adorned you more in your majesty. Looking down upon us tonight on this Mathis Lake Road, I believe we have your attention. I believe the angels are also saying, look, a house down there is bringing you some praise. So we bless you tonight. We honor you as our Father, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. We thank you that you will sit on the throne of David in Jerusalem. And you will rule this world by yourself with a rod of iron. We thank you beyond that we have eternal ages. We thank you, God, that we have a wonderful and bright future. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I went to bed this afternoon and I didn't turn over. At 3.54, God is my witness. I woke up, didn't know if it was day or night or what day it was. I said, oh, it's Sunday afternoon. I slept. <clears throat> I was tired. It's a good tired. Everybody should leave church tired, not rested. I'm going to preach tonight on the subject, Faithful Family. Hebrews, please, 11th chapter, verse 23 through verse 27, on Faithful Family. Before we stand and read our text tonight, I want to talk about the family. Uh, the father's name is a Aram. His wife is named Josephette. Now, you don't have many of those around. A a Aram and Josephette. That's the parents of Aaron, Miriam, and Moses. A faithful family. A faithful family. Let's please stand. Hebrews 11. Verse 23, God says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was here three months of his parents, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith Moses, he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction, with the people of God than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. You may be seated. What a great blessing it is to experience a faithful family. All of us cannot say that we have experienced that in our growing up years. But some of us have experienced a faithful family. I'm one of those who can testify and give witness. In my life growing up, I was in a faithful family. I had a very strong Christian daddy and a very strong Christian mama. And I was raised and trained in the things of God in that faithful, faithful Christian home. Tonight, though, we're going to talk about another family, the family of Moses, Aaron, Miriam, and their parents. The faithfulness of parents. The faithfulness of parents. We have an assignment as parents that is very important to God and to our family. We have an assignment for a few short years with our small children to do a great work in their lives and show before them a faithfulness in the home. Now, let's look at verse 23 for just a moment again, please. Verse 23, by faith Moses... When he was born, was he three months of his parents, 
The faith is not here by Moses. He's three months old. But it's by his parents. His parents have faith. And he's three months old. To do something. The faith of the parents of Moses. Not having the entire Bible as we have tonight. Do not have the Holy Spirit inside their bodies as we have tonight as Christian people. But they understood something about being faithful. After three months of hiding their, their son in faithfulness of their parents. Now, these faithful parents also were fearless parents. They had no fear of things around them. In verse 23, the last part, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. I'll read to you the commandment the king had put out. It was this. If it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. That was the commandment of the king he had put out. We had just read in verse 23. And they were not, af they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Even though he has said, if it be a son, kill him. If it be a daughter, then let her live. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. They had faith at three months old to hide him in the bulrush. They had faith to hide him in the Nile at three months old. And they were fearless in what the king had to say. They will not have fear of his commandment. They will not fear what the king had to say. I believe they have someone else who taught them more important to them than the king. And that is God. You will never have any more important voice in your heart to hear than the voice of the Lord God. So they are faithful and they have no fear of the king's commandment. They will not kill him or have him killed. They will try to hide him in the bulrush to spare his life. But it's just like God, we know God is sovereign. So one day here comes the king's daughter to the river and she will recognize the ark he's laying in, the little box he's laying in, and she will send for the baby, he cries, and then she wants to hire somebody to nurse him. So she sends her servant to find somebody. And she finds Moses' mama. This is God. And then she pays Moses' mama, not knowing that he is her mama, she pays him to nurse her own baby. And that's God. God will always fill in the blanks. He will always order the steps of a good person. You see, God is in control. Moses is going to live by God's assignment because God has a purpose for the life of Moses. And God has a purpose not for your life and my life. He has a purpose and assignment for us. So the parents are faithful. They will not have him killed. And they are not afraid of the king's commandment. Now, those following God, though, has a prize. As a price you and I will have to pay if you and I fully, scripturally, wholehearted follow God. Now, if we're just carnal or we just look warm, there's not a price to pay. But if you take up that cross and follow him daily, wholeheartedly, without compromise, without backing down, you will have a price to pay if you and I fully follow God as a faithful person. I'm going to spend some time tonight on this third part, the price we have to pay if we truly follow God. I'm going to give you three things. But one, it will be a choice. No one is made even by God to follow Him. God will not make any of us follow Him. He will not make anybody be spiritual. Nobody has to shout. Nobody has to worship. We have a free will. We are free more than agent to make a choice. So now to follow God with a price to pay is a choice you and I have to make. Let's please now read this in verse number 24. 
By faith, Moses, he was come to years, refused be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He's in the palace. He has it made with all the things around him. Verse 25, look at the choice he made. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He made a choice to leave the palace. He made a choice to step outside the ranks of Pharaoh's home. He made a choice to suffer affliction with the people of God right there in bondage of Egypt. His choice was, I leave the luxury of the palace and my choice is, I'm going to suffer affliction with God's people. Tonight, God's people are suffering in this country. I'm talking about the true body of Christ tonight. We have been labeled. We have been laughed at. We have been scorned. We have been mocked and ridiculed. But my Bible says that God will laugh last. Amen. He will get the last laugh. So come on, liberals. Come on, society. Go ahead and mock us. Go ahead and ridicule us. Go ahead and scorn us. There'll come a glad day after a while. We're going home to heaven. We're going home to glory because Christ is Lord and Savior. (laughs) He made a choice. The choice tonight is yours. The choice to turn to God be used by God in afflictions or enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Let me stop. Sin for a little while is pleasure. I won't lie about it. I won't lie about it. Sin for a little while will bring someone temporary pleasure. He just said it right there. But it's only for a season. It's only for a little while. But to me, what they call pleasure what they call drunkenness, and the next morning over a toilet, looking at the toilet, is that really pleasure? Is that really having a good time? I was asked years ago from McCray, Georgia, by the meanest man in Telford County, I found out later how mean he was, he said, preacher, don't you want a once in a while boogie? I said, matter of fact, I do. I'm in revival all this week. I book you every night. The difference is, tomorrow morning I get up, I don't have a headache. I don't have a commode. I just still, I still boogie. You see, our boogie that we have, my friend, is not just seasonal. It's not just temporary. We can boogie ourselves right into the gate of glory one day and sit down with the angels of God. It's a choice, it's a choice, number two, a comparison. Verse 26, please. Esteeming means consider the reproach means toning or being railed at of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. He said, I'm on, I consider, I will have reproach. I will be toned. I will be railed at. But he said, I compare this. It's greater riches with the reproach of Christ than the treasures in Egypt. He compared Egypt's treasures with being reproached, being taunted, or railed at. He said, the greatest treasure is that side. Affliction is the greatest treasure. We cannot care with us a U-Haul. I'm sorry to tell you tonight, you can't do it. Christ says, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt, where thieves do not break through and steal. You can't carry it with you. My friend, your kids will have a party when you're gone. So I'm going to tell you tonight, just rear back and and use it for the Lord's work. Give God some more of it. Give, Give away some more of it. The more you give, the more you be blessed. My friend, make a choice tonight. Our greatest riches in this world is just what we have in Christ. 
That's the greatest treasure we all have tonight is in Christ Jesus. Not what the world has. And Egypt is a picture or a type of the world. That's what it represents. A choice, a comparison. Number three, a commitment. Verse 27. By faith he, Moses, forsook. That word means abandoned Egypt or the world. Not fearing the wrath of the king. Not afraid of him. For he endured. That word means he was steadfast. Listen now. As seeing him who is invisible. That's Christ. Who Moses saw by faith. Listen. This is the book of Hebrews. In the Old Testament. Going back to the Old Testament. It says that Moses saw the invisible. How in the world can he do that? He's still with the Father. He hadn't come to Bethlehem yet. And Moses saw him being visible. He saw him by faith and not by sight. He made a choice. He made a comparison. He, had, he made a commitment. I'm going to serve somebody I've never seen. I'm going to serve somebody I've never laid eyes on. I'm going to serve the invisible. Because tonight, my friend, you know this by faith. You know he's real. You know he's alive. And one of these days, we'll lay our eyes on that dark-skinned, black-haired black Jew from the tribe of Judah. We'll lay our eyes on the Savior, the King of King of Kings, Lord of Lords. And we'll see him face to face. We'll see the scars on his body. On his head, his side, and his feet. Being visible one day, we see by faith. Tonight, we'll see him one day by sight. We'll lay eyes on the very one who died for us on the cross. And Moses says that in verse 27 again, please. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. And that's my introduction. I'm going to preach tonight a, little, a few minutes on a faithful family. On a faithful family. In God's order, if God has his will in the family, it will begin with a husband or the father. If God has his will in a family, it will begin with a husband and the father. That is the leader of the family. Now sometimes that plan doesn't work out, not God's fault. So he'll turn to the other one. He'll, he'll now speak to the wife. He will now use the spouse. Because the daddy and the husband, either the lost or too lazy himself to serve God. He'll turn to the spouse. I've also seen him to bypass the father and the spouse. I have seen him turn to children. My friend, he'll turn to whoever will let him have the life. He'll turn to one son. He'll turn to one daughter. I've seen also that one son and that one daughter, I've seen the whole house get saved. My friend, any family, any household, for any family member that will seek God in your life, it will impact your whole family. Don't try to force them. Don't try to hem them up. Just spend some time in prayer. And showing your family through your life the testimony of the cross of Calvary. If God has his perfect plan though, he will use the father and the husband of that family to have a faithful family. Now men, on Sunday morning, you should not be the last one out of bed. Don't drag out the last minute want to know where your Bible is. If you're going to take responsibility to have a faithful family, you say, honey and children, get up. It is time to dress yourself. We're going to the house of God in a few minutes. Matter of fact, we're going to Bible study. We're going to stay for church. And you're going to enjoy it whether you like it or not. I left home at 19 years old. Until I left home, Daddy said, you eat here, you sleep here, you're going to church. If you don't, get out. 
Today, parents say, I can't do that. Listen, they only weigh a few pounds. You can't handle that responsibility. I don't want to force them. You force them to bathe. I hope you do. You force them to go to school. That's a good thing. Make them go to the house of God. And you watch them and make sure they listen. Are they going to fool you? Listen to what's being said. Make sure they paid attention to what's being said. I can testify. Dragging somebody to church will not harm you. I know I'm pretty messed up up here. My soul is in good shape. I've only known church for 70 years. I have never known being outside of church. I had a faithful family dedicated to God, to his house, to bless the food, to pray for rain, and we got it, to seek God. And he done very little work on the Sunday. He fed the house double on Saturday. He made very little chores on Sunday, even though we're not on the law. He said, you play Dean on Sunday, you don't play too loud. Don't slam the door. Don't cut no paper. I don't know where that comes from. Don't cut no paper. All these old time things. I know they forfeit. We lost a lot of things, church. Call them forfeit you want to. We lost a generation of obedience to parents, to the police force, to teachers and principals, and to God. Not the kids' fault. It's these young parents' fault who don't have the goal to raise them and teach them and show them that Christ is the answer. You said, preach, you should have preached this this morning. Well, they won't listen to me. They won't listen to me. They all, they won't listen. You here tonight, you listen to me, right? They won't listen to me. Faithful family. Father, that's his perfect plan is for us. Wife, children, faithfulness. Fearless. Fearless. I raised my boys. Now my grandkids. I say at the law of the land. Contradicts God's law, break it. Pray. Bow in prayer, boys. No more about Supreme Court. We have a high court who says, let's pray without ceasing. Fearlessness. I've always wanted to stand for what's right and count the cause. My youngest son was 16 years old. He just began to drive. Coming down South Green Street, an elderly lady pulled out in front of him. He hit her. She backed the car back up to where she was at the stop sign. Follow me now. The police department come and worked the wreck and said, well, we saw her back up. That's okay. If he's in the right, she's in the wrong, you'll be okay. But I smelled a rat. I smelled a rat. Came kind for the court. It was packed out. I'm in the back of the court. Jason's 16 years old. He's up front before the little judge. And she has two lawyers. And they're her relatives. And the judge is her relative. And the first question was asked, how long have you been driving, son? Well, one year. He's 16. How about you, so-and-so? Huh? How long have you been driving? Oh, said about 70-something years. So I stood up. Back in the courtroom, Pat. Judge said, who are you and what you want? I said, that's my son. I need a lawyer. You had enough time for this case. Be seated. So I eased back down. They kept drilling him and drilling him. Kangaroo court. I stood back up. I said, Jason, come on, let's go home, boy. Now, you know him. He didn't know what to do. He, he, he was turning like that right there. I said, come on. We walked out of that court, packed full. In the hall, I met the city police. I think they're going to lock me up. We walked right by them. Listen, Mary, this true story. I got home, the phone was ringing. The police chief said, Brother Hemphill, I don't apologize to you. We're sorry this mess happened. I said, you better get it straightened out. I'm going to call in town of five down here. I'm going to tear this place apart. I don't have much. I'm a preacher. 
But I spend every dime. I'm going to stand for what is right. Listen, not just court for alcohol, wine, abortion, everything else. Stand as a daddy, as a husband for what is right. Lead your family toward commitment. As for me and my house, listen, he didn't ask his family. Joshua didn't ask his wife. He said, as for me and my house, bless God, we're going to serve the Lord. A faithful family is what every child in this world born needs to have. Is a faithful father and a faithful mother who loves God, serves God, and follows God. But I'm not through. Faithfulness, fearlessness, and the future. The future. As you and I keep living, we're going to have separation. It's just the way it is. After a while, in a faithful family, we're going to lay somebody to rest. Somebody else to rest. Somebody else to rest. And after several years, a large number becomes very small. But follow me. Faithfulness and fearlessness and the future. You know how I love my mama. Oh, I love my mama. I love her dearly. And for four years and four months, she had no idea who I was. Blank. Empty. But Jerry, you loved your mama? One of these days, Miss Nell, I don't know how it's going to work out, but I know one thing. The Bible says we'll be known as we're known here. I'm going to see that mama with a mind of Christ. And one day, we'll walk down streets, not paved with gold. We'll walk them gold. Walk through gates of pearl, round walls of jasper. Listen, what I'm saying tonight, faithful family, we have a future. We have a future that doesn't end at cognizance or flesh today. It doesn't stop at the grave. Matter of fact, we're not in the grave. When you draw that last breath, my friend, forget about that expensive funeral. Forget about that $15 casket, $15,000 casket. You'll be with the Lord. They're going to bury all that stuff in two days' time. Give it to me, I'll use it. Amen? We'll be in God's presence. A faithful family, a fearless family, has a wonderful and bright and glorious future. Let me give you a story tonight for our new members. Y'all have all heard it? Just get your Facebook out. In, 19, in 1969, the last Sunday in June, my wife and I went by the, my, my parents' home. He had a stroke, mind of a child for six months. He called me Junior on the screen porch. He said, Junior, Sunday now, come Wednesday morning, I'm going to start singing, and I'll never stop again. He said, you take care, matey. I said, Daddy, I got my hands full of my wife. I just passed it off like that. Sunday, Sunday, when the morning, 6.30, as up in the body, in God's presence, he went. He told me, Sunday, I'm going to start singing Wednesday morning, Junior. Wednesday morning. And I'll never stop again. What a future. <laughs> Listen, church. That should make you happy tonight. We have a wonderful future. The dead in Christ one day will rise. If we're still on this earth living, we shall be changed and caught up with them in the air. To meet not the president, but meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Where he goes I'm going. Where he goes, we're going. And we'll be with the Lord for eternity to come. My friend, that's what heaven and I means to me. 
Come here, brother. Come here, brother. Help me to, help me to sing this song. There is coming a day when no heart ache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eyes. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. Go ahead. And what a I shall see when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. Listen. When he takes me Listen. by the hand <laughs> and leads me through the promised land, what a day. Glorious day that will be. Before the course again, listen. He leads it by the hand. He says, this is where Peter lives here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Ruth lives here. Come on. Come on. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They live over here. But come on with him. Come on now. There's your mama. Your mama lives right there. That's where she lives. Come on now. He said, wait a minute. He said, you won't find no hospitals. We don't have hospitals. We don't have nursing homes. We don't have children's hospitals. We don't have funeral homes. We don't have any IVs. We don't have any, we don't have any chemo treatments. We don't have any Alzheimer's. We don't have any leukemia. We don't have any colds. Say the course, brother. What a day. Praise in church. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God created a faithful family a long time ago, Adam and Eve. And that is the institution of God for us to have a family, if possible. What a wonderful life it is to be a part of a faithful family. The parents that would benefit their children in years to come. To train them in the way that they should go. To teach them the things of God. Faithfulness to God will never return void. We saw tonight in the sermon about the faithfulness of Moses' family. It's not just for them. It's for every family today who will seek God, be led by God, to have a home that is faithful to God, the benefits of the future of the family because of a faithful family.